Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar this morning about the new Jenkins plugin for Soft Labs. Uh, I want to let everyone know up front that we're going to be recording this webinar, so you'll be able to share it with your friends and colleagues afterwards. We'll be sending out the, the copies of the recording via email uh, a couple of days uh, after this uh, particular event. Uh, so this morning, we have uh, two distinguished presenters. We have Neil Manvar, who's a solutions architect for us here at Soft Labs. Uh, he came to us via Yahoo, where he was a front-end engineer, uh, working very closely with SOS and test automation procedures. And we'll have Jack Moxon, our product manager for, for SOS Labs. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to you, Jack, and uh, you can start. Thank you, Ken, for the warm introduction. Um, nice to be here with everyone today. I um, want to walk you through quickly our, our agenda. Um, we're going to do a very brief introduction on kind of what is GI and CD Jenkins. I promise not to go too long on that, as I know lots of you will know lots about that, but we'll do a quick overview. Uh, we'll then get to uh, talking about the Sauce Labs Jenkins plugin. Um, we'll do a demonstration of that plugin, uh, which will be led by Neil. Before we, we jump in, I wanted to tell a, a brief story. Um, and I, I learned about this story from Bjorn Freeman Benson, who is at New Relic. So I will uh, tip my hat to him for introducing this story to me. Um, the man you see there is a man named Dr. Paul McCready, and he is the winner of the first Kremer Prize. The Kremer Prize was announced in 1959. I believe Kremer was one of these eccentric billionaire types. Um, he was very interested in human-powered flight. And so he prize, I think that was 50,000 pounds, which was a lot of money in the days. Um, for the team of researchers that could make a vehicle that could powered just by, you know, human, um, like a bicycle type plane, basically. Um, people started working on this in 1959, um, but no one was really making very good progress. Um, in 1976 or 77, Dr. Paul McCready uh, uh, started working on this problem. Um, and he realized that uh, that he could actually solve this problem um, not by focusing on building a plane that could be powered by human um, human power, but by instead building a plane that they could iterate on very quickly. Going on was most of these teams were spending a year um, doing test and design, putting things up, and then they would do their their test flight and it would crash, and then they would spend another year and then do another test, and it took literally a year to do a single iteration on the plane. Um, Creedy decided to build a very simple plane out of mylar, aluminum, tubing, and wire um, so that he could test it much more quickly. So um, he was able to get to a point where he could run, uh, run through a test within a few hours, crash the plane, um, but then fix it and do it again. Within six months, after people had been spending almost a decade on the problem, he had won the prize. And so it just highlights the importance of being able to iterate quickly. And this is kind of the philosophy behind continuous delivery, continuous integration. And it's, it's a key part of why there's value in, in the tools that Soft Labs provide, as well as the Jenkins plugin that we have. So, so moving on, what is CI, CD? Why does it matter? Um, you know, continuous integration, continuous delivery. Um, we think of it as business acceleration here. So it's what allows you to get your features out there faster, which makes your customers happier. Hopefully that makes managers happier, and it makes developers happier because they like seeing their work out in the public as quickly as possible. Another metaphor for this is thinking of code as inventory. So Joel Spolsky talked about this, um, but having features sitting around on the shelf is kind of like having your inventory sitting in a warehouse and not being available for your customers. So if you have features that could be out there making you money or delighting your customers, but it's just sitting around, um, that's, that's an opportunity cost, and that's, that's a bad thing for your company. The companies that are able to achieve CI and CD are going to outperform companies that don't. Um, and those that can help make CI and CD a reality will be very valued in their companies. I, I put a picture here of the holy grail because, as a lot of you probably know, um, CI and CD is sort of seen as this holy grail. But there are new tools that are like this Jenkins plugin that make it a much more achievable thing for organizations. So basically, what is Jenkins? Jenkins is an open source CI tool. Um, it's a way to specify um, a workflow that you want to run through before you do a deploy. Um, let me give an example maybe of, of a typical workflow. No problem. So go through a 
work. We begin to play in an enterprise corporate environment. But uh, so, for example, uh, when a developer triggers a pull request, and a pull request uh, symbolizes that uh, there, I want to make a code change, it would create a build that would run unit tests. A build is an instance of a Jenkins job. So on a pull request, a build would be triggered to run the unit test. If the unit test passed, the code would be deployed onto some box or endpoint, and the functional test, meaning the Selenium or Appium test, would be run against that pull request code that resided on the box that was just deployed to. Um, on passing functional tests, it would, it would stamp the pull request as safe to merge, meaning that the code that uh, is in the pull request is safe to merge and will not break any test or any functionality. And after that, a developer, a coder could merge that in. If the pull request build fails, that means that don't merge this in, and, and the test will fail if you merge this in. Um, and it would stop the pipeline. So it would stamp the pull request as do not merge, not safe. Uh, after it would be merged, more tests would be run, both automated, Selenium performance, and eventually, after all the tests ran and you had confidence that, that your experience is not going to be broken and uh, the project is going to work and all the different configurations and browsers, operating systems, mobile devices, uh, you have to go ahead to push to production. So to, to summarize, a pull request would trigger a build which would run unit tests, deploy code, and run the functional test. If that build passes, it would stamp the pull request as safe to merge. If it doesn't pass, it would stamp the pull request as not safe to merge. After the pull request has been merged, a more test run, and eventually the code is pushed to production. Thanks, Neil. And I, I, I'd say that you know we, we at Sauce Labs have run hundreds of millions of tests over the last uh, nearly a decade in business here. Uh, Neil, as a solutions architect, is out there talking to lots of different companies, doing lots of different things. But one thing we see is that Jenkins is by far the leading tool for CI. Um, you know, I would say over 90% over of the customers that we interact with are, are using Jenkins in some form. I, I even saw a poll recently that said 100% of people are using Jenkins. They might also have a, a team using Travis or Bamboo or something else, but almost every organization has some sort of Jenkins instance set up. And given the primacy of Jenkins in this ecosystem, um, Sauce Labs decided, well, we need to make sure that we have a, a really easy way to integrate with Jenkins and provide value to our customers. You know, one of our, our big missions here at this company is to make CI CD possible through functional and automated testing. And that's something that we accomplish, I think, with this Jenkins plugin. So there's a few different things that the Jenkins plugin is going to provide in terms of value, and I'll, I'll go through those. I'll talk a little bit about what it does, and then Neil will do a full demonstration for you. So the first thing is it makes it easy to integrate. Um, it, it makes it possible for you to feel like CD is within reach for your organization. The same thing is it increases the speed with which your, your tests are going to run. So um, one of the, the big pain points we talk to people about in terms of CD is speed of testing. And so with Sauce Labs and this plugin, you're going to be able to use parallel testing in such a way that tests are going to run a lot faster. And really, everyone wants more insight into their CD pipeline. Um, everyone wants to see you know, where and why are tests failing in the right place, and the, the Jenkins plugin is give you some smart reporting that, that wouldn't be available otherwise. So what specifically does the Jenkins plugin do? First of all, very simply, it handles authentication. So you can automatically set your username and SOS API access key in the plugin so it's on the same server um, that you want to be running your, your build from. I just mentioned before, it's going to automatically handle reporting. So there's a simple little web GUI that Neil will show you that will basically allow you to embed your awesome SOS dashboard in your Jenkins reports, which is very much um, from what we hear from, from users. That's how people use Jenkins and Sauce in their workflow, and it makes that a really uh, magical experience. Um, parallel browsers. So we allow you to set browser OS platform combos and run your tests in parallel with the Jenkins plugin. And Neil will explain explicitly how that's done with environment variables. And finally, for those of you that are you know, testing applications that may not be public yet, 
you can use Sauce Connect, which is our secure tunneling tool. And the Jenkins plugin will automatically launch Sauce Connect um, and make it so that the uh, Jenkins build has access to any sort of firewalled um, state servers. Neil is going to do a quick demonstration for you. And, and one note here is that as, you, as we go through the presentation, uh, if you have questions about uh, any of the things that you're seeing here or have general questions about Sauce Labs, uh, go ahead and enter those in the, the chat box, and we will answer those as time permits. Back, uh, let's uh, deep dive into a demonstration. I'm going to start with uh, some big test cases and then show them executing in Jenkins and uh, demo the whole Jenkins plugin from there. But first, let's see the test cases. Here I've used Cucumber to write a quick test case that will go to the GitHub homepage, click the Explore link, and then verify that um, the marketing header is there. The second test case will simply just go to github.com and verify the title of the page is GitHub, Build Software Better Together. And uh, so this Cucumber in each line will translate into some code. So you can see here, I am on the GitHub homepage, it says go to github.com. Uh, the one will verify that the title is uh, as specified, and here it's uh, waiting for the Explore link to be present, and then click, and waiting for the market header to be present. So first, let's uh, go through the Jenkins configuration. So here I've set up a Jenkins job, um, which is Webinar Sauce On Demand Jenkins plugin, and what it's doing is it's checking out this repo from GitHub into the GitHub branch. And then I have uh, checked the Sauce Labs support box, which means go ahead and use the Sauce On Demand plugin. It, and uh, that will pull up this section, the Sauce Labs options section. In there, I have checked the box to enable Sauce Connect, meaning that uh, before my test suite runs, uh, do create a Sauce Connect tunnel. Uh, the box underneath that is the web driver box. Here I can specify what browsers I want to run on, and it sets it, it, it populates an environment variable with a JSON string representing the different configurations. So here is how I would add a browser. Just like um, Now, web driver is for uh, apps and uh, so Selenium, whereas Appium, uh, whereas uh, Appium is for native as Selenium is for web apps. So if you're doing native app testing, you could uh, specify devices for your Appium test here, which would get loaded into an environment variable for your test automation framework to massage in to uh, process that. Um, now if you're using Appium, here you would also specify the native app package path, which would be the path to the APK or the zip file containing your iOS app. Um, and all we provide uh, fields to override the authentication, and whatever is specified in this field would be lo uh, loaded into uh, the sauce username environment variable and uh, the sauce API access variable, or SOS API key environment variables. Uh, there's also the advanced options here, so you can specify when you want to launch SOS Connect. Here I have said always, but you could do a Boolean condition or a regex match or some time uh, that you want, a time window that you want SOS Connect to be launched in, and some SOS specific configurations, which you should not need to touch, but if you want to point to different uh, hosts in a port, do some here. And, uh, and anything specified in the Sauce Connect options box will be passed as parameters to Sauce Connect if Sauce Connect is enabled. And, uh, underneath that, in the Sauce Connect binary location, you can specify the path to the Sauce Connect. If you don't, it'll use the built-in Sauce Connect binary. Now, Neil, if I have a question about any of these fields, where can I go to, to learn more about what, what some of these fields mean? Good question, Jack. So you can go right here and cl click the question mark box, and it shows exactly what each field is doing. For example, this web driver field will load the sauce on-demand browsers environment variable 
or populate it with a JSON formatted string. Similarly, with any other field, you could click the question mark and uh, get more documentation and information. Cool. Um, so, build part where the magic of uh, running the test is happening, and here I'm just setting some environment variables, um, processing in the environment variables set by this field here, and kind of make file on the fly at runtime, which will run my test in parallel, and then I am installing all my necessary gems since I'm using Ruby, and then calling make to run my test. Now at the end, I have to publish my JUnit reports. So I set the post build action to publish JUnit test result report, and I specify the path to the JUnit XML, and also add the additional test report feature of embedding the Sauce Labs reports. And I'll show you exactly what that does, but this is part of uh, getting the pretty reporting onto the dashboard. The only code change that has to be made to support the embed reports is outputting the Sauce On Demand session ID, which is essentially the Selenium session ID, and the job name. And I'm doing that here as part of my test automation framework. So go ahead and run this. So I now will let the console output while this is running. It is going to launch Sauce Connect, as you see here. And I'll also pull up the dashboard. Uh, this is the new Sauce Labs dashboard. And here we can see that one tunnel has now been activated. Uh, my root has generated this make file, which shows that I'm going to run map 10.safari8, i n uh, 43, uh, Firefox 36 in parallel. Idea. Tests have started, uh, have triggered, and we can see that there are tests now running on my sauce account in the sauce. And very soon, we can see them flushing out here. Only one more running on OS X 10.10 .10, Safari 8. It is closing down the Soft Connect tunnel now. And reporting my test results. So if I go back to my, my Jenkins job, I can see the test cases that ran in this build and OS browser configuration and whether they passed or failed. Into that, I can go to any build, exactly what ran in there, and select a test case. Pull up an iframe in which Sauce has been loaded to. So now you can debug directly inside of Jenkins and not have to context switch back and forth between Jenkins and Sauce Lab. You don't have to find the tests by title or time inside saucelabs.com. Now, every test that ran in build number 10 of the Jenkins job is all reported here. So I click this and see all the Selenium commands and the screenshots that happen at that point in time, as seen here. Sub DOM, and next it'll click Explore, and then verify that some element was there. And we can see that we were sauce connected as well. I'll video real quick. So, in addition to screenshots and screencasts, we also have the Selenium log and metadata, which I will highlight real quick as well. Explore. Uh, verified that we were there. So here's a Selenium log, and here's a metadata, metadata pertinent to that test case. Great. Um, Neil, uh, if someone wants to uh, install the Jenkins plugin, they just have to go to the Jenkins uh, plugin store, or 
um, about Fuzz website or where can they go? Interesting question. So to install the Jenkins plugin, what you do is go to the Jenkins Twitter homepage and uh, or your Jenkins instance and then click Manage Jenkins. Inside of Manage Jenkins, there's this Manage Plugins field. Click on that. And now you can see if anything needs to be updated, installed, or updated, and you can also see available plugins, and just go ahead and type in the search box, Sauce On Demand, and we'll go ahead and see it. So in this case, I have it installed. So here I would just go Sauce On Demand, and you see that I have it installed there. And once it's installed, it's just as simple as clicking that checkbox for Sauce Support, filling the fields, and then you're good to go, yeah? Exactly. So I will highlight the configuration one more time, but it's as easy as just Sauce Labs support, which will enable the Sauce Labs option section and the Sauce Connect advanced options, and fill out all the pertinent fields. Great. Um, so now what we're going to do is add some more browsers. So now adding browsers is as easy as and in the web driver section, if you have if your test automation framework is processing that variable. So here I'm going to add the new Windows 10 Internet Explorer 11 configuration and also the OS X El Capitan 8.1. So added two more browsers. I click Save. I click Build. Here, last time, it launches Sauce Connect, and then we'll create a make file at, uh, on runtime and run the test in parallel on Sauce in all the six browsers I have specified. So here it shows the make file was created. I call run all, which will run all my tests in parallel, and now inside Sauce. I see my tests get triggered all in parallel. Yeah, so that's that's simply setting a environment variable that your test code references. Exactly. So you want once you've set that up, you can just go to this interface and never have to touch the test code again and still add support for browsers, is that right? Exactly, Jack. So here I have I created a script which will read the environment variable and then create a make file. So I'm just processing in the configuration that was uh, the JSON string that was passed into the sauce on demand browsers environment variable and creating a script that will run it in parallel. And once I've done this once, it works for all the different browsers and configurations, so I just specify that in the Jenkins job, uh -huh. and this will uh, pick it up and create all the prop targets to run those browsers, which uh, I'm calling all in parallel. Great. Here we saw a bunch of tests already ran. There's one more going on. We'll just wait for that one to go. The tests have now all, all it is recording and publishing the results. As you can see, here I am outputting the sauce on demand session ID and the job name to standard out. And the Jenkins plugin picks this up and creates embedded reports. So now you see it ran in more configure more browsers. All test cases ran here. Uh, so the time where it's most useful to see the embedded result is when something has failed. Here I see I went to a build number build number five, which had a few failures, and I made this fail on purpose. But uh, just wanted to show when's most useful, and so I'm going to pull up a fail case, and pull down here, and I see that this selector explore marketing header will fail. So I added this will fail part, which is making which is forcing this test case to fail because this selector is not. Present. Explore marketing header is there, but I've added will fail just to sh just to show a failure. So here I can see exactly 
what the test case is. Build number five have failed, and also see their screencast and all uh, relevant information uh, for that test case. And that, what it also does is it embeds it in the JUnit report. So when I pull up a JUnit report, it shows that this was a regression, meaning this test case did not fail last time. Here is the stat trace that uh, after 30 seconds, it was not able to find the explore marketing header will fail. And here is also the sauce session that, that is pertinent to this test case. Another the JUnit report would be from here. You can go to test results. Here we see all the failed test cases. Here we see all of them. And we can pull out everything we need to from here and drill down. So that was a full demonstration of the whole Jenkins plugin at uh, in. Uh, one thing I also want to highlight on is if you want to download the video, you can click this and it'll just download the video. So in case you want to get it on your own local system and maybe email it to someone or something like that, you can very easily do that as well and go with the logs. Thanks. Let's pause right now and see if there's any questions from the audience. Ken? Yeah, we've got a bunch of questions coming in. Uh, some questions about Ruby. Uh, Neil, this is probably for you. Assuming we aren't using Using Ruby, could we just build our own system to do this? I uh, build and make say using a Ruby make file. Yeah, so you could use any technologies as long as you're using the Sauce on-demand plugin on Jenkins. And like I said, you're putting the set ID and job name to standard out. Does not matter. Does not matter what test automation technologies you use. Just sauce on man session ID and job name has to be out to standard out, and the configuration has to be as such with the sauce demand plugin being enabled, and also publishing JUnit reports and embedding sauce labs reports. So it does not matter that I'm using Ruby or Cucumber or any particular tech stack. This works for any different test automation technologies as long as you're using the plugin. Um, publishing a unit report and outputting the session ID and job name to standard out. So say someone is using the old plugin with Sauce Labs and they want to download and, and use the new plugin, do they have anything special? Do they just download it? Do they have to restart Jenkins? What so needs to be done? I will show you how to do that. Here I've installed Jenkins on my local host and clicked Manage Jenkins. So I'll do this one more time. Manage Jenkins. Um, manage plugins. Here we see that there's updates available, and you typically see that the sauce one is available. But for now, uh, I've updated the sauce one. But just click uh, where you want to update. It'll say what's installed and what needs to be updated, or version will update to. And so to click it, click download and install after restart. Check this box uh, saying that you're going to restart Jenkins, mm. and, and a plugin will be updated once Jenkins has been restarted. Okay, so restart is necessary to, to refresh the... Yes, a restart is necessary to update a plugin inside Jenkins, and this is the uh, way that Jenkins has been designed. Uh, the question here is, so you don't have to fill out the configuration steps on Jenkins, configure system, soft support? Uh, we do have to fill that out. So let me go back to here and show you. So basically, when you click Sauce Support, it creates all the options, all the fields for this. So you, once this is checked, that, that means uh, you, you're going to go ahead and use the plugin. So you have to check Sauce Lab Support, and then you see the Sauce Labs options, and you see the Sauce Connect Advanced options. Place, if I understand the question correctly, Neil, maybe he's asking about the, there's a place to globally set your authentication um, oh, okay. details. So if you wanted um, to put in a username and API key, uh, not just for this project, but for all of Jenkins, that still is available. Um, that, that's, we didn't highlight in the, in the demo, Most but that certainly. is still something that you can do. 
Just about using tunnels, uh, is there a way to use the Sauce Connect plugin with a remotely existing Sauce Connect tunnel? Yes. Yeah. So what you would have to do there is just specify the tunnel identifier here. So it would be tunnel identifier. And would um, connect that tunnel and use that one. Instead of kicking off a new tunnel. Within. Exactly. And so all of that's available in the documentation on Soft Labs? Yes. So all the all man line options for Sauce Connect can be found here on our documentation website and can be specified here. So, for example, if you had a proxy, you could do, you know, here. Any options? Get look the command line option. So actually, you can uh, click uh, the question mark and click the command line options link there, and then that will take you to the document. And there, from there, you can click command line options. So there's a question here on, uh, is there a limit to the number of browsers that can be run in parallel? So kind of a, that's a general question around Soft Labs. There's no limit. Uh, you can run, so for instance, if you have a concurrency of 20 VMs, you can, you can, if, in, if you triggered 50 tests, what would happen is the first 20 would get run in parallel, and then the next 30 would be queued. And as tests pass or fail or finish, the test would be grabbed from the queue and start running. So there is no limit. You can run as well as you want, and uh, if your concurrency doesn't allow it, it gets queued. And you can basically, if you want to reach out to um, sales at Sauce Labs, you can talk about getting more concurrency for your account. Right. Uh, another question here is, I've noticed that using Sauce Connect to create a tunnel uh, slows my test speed. So what we do is whitelist the sauce IPs to pass those those particular tunnels. Is this doable in a new plugin? Yes, it is doable. You know, so there's there's uh, you don't really need to do anything for the plugin per yeah. se. It's just so, something you do on the the Jenkins server. Exactly. It's a Jenkins configuration, and if you uh, if you're not using Sauce Connect, the, uh, then you can still leverage other parts of the plugin, like the embedded results and uh, whatnot. Yeah. So, um, if you're not using Sauce Connect, you can still continue not to use Sauce Connect. Um, I've noticed that later versions of the releases of Sauce Connect, like I, think, I believe we're at 4.3.10, have uh, all had some performance improvements and some more stability improvements. So, just make sure you're on the latest Sauce Connect if you're experiencing any performance issues regarding your test. Right. We're in the process of deprecating Sauce Connect 3.0, so if you're still using that, it's time to, it's been over a year since Sauce 4 has been out, so yeah. it's time to move and migrate to Sauce, so Sauce Connect 4. Here in the builds that we ran today, it used Sauce Connect 4.3.10. I ran, in my last build, I ran uh, 12 tests, I believe, and 12 tests took, in, including Sauce Connect, took minutes and seven seconds on various platforms. So in, within, two minute, within two minutes and seven seconds, it created Sauce Connect tunnel, um, parsed environment variables, and ran the test suite, and decommissioned the Sauce Connect tunnel. Good question about the, uh, is, is there some Sauce REST API I need to upgrade for showing the pass fail stats in Jenkins with the Sauce integration? Or, uh, just update to the newest version of the plugin, which is uh, 1.136, and the pass fail should uh, be working. It, it should not matter. There's no extra work required for the pass fail unless uh, it's auto already updating the pass fail on the Jenkins dash or on the Sauce dashboard. So the so Jenkins plugin uses the REST API to pull from Sauce. Uh, whether the test case is passed or failed. So if you've updated the job accordingly, um, it should show up as pass or fail. 
just just show today, just like it shows here. Your, exactly your right now. So since these are all past inside of Sauce dashboard, it shows as past on Jenkins. And if you go over back to the the Sauce dashboard, you can see the the pass fail and the different colors. Yes. So here well. is some failed test cases. So pass fail, three passed, three failed. Perfect. Then one last question here is uh, about key names. So what key names is a plugin for the environment variables for the capabilities object? I'm using a special version of the plugin that allows you to set custom prefixes for the key names. So once again, you can uh, go to the configuration and click the question mark um, right here. And it shows that it's the SOS on-demand browser's environment variable that gets with a JSON formatted string. My understanding was that that, that is com comes from Selenium RC potentially. Um, so I'm not sure it, it, the fixed piece of it, Neil. Um, but so I, I'm not sure if that's uh, relevant for WebDriver. But um, right, you can add things there. So here, as you see in my code, I have referenced as of processing, I'm doing a JSON parse on the soft demand browser's environment variable. Okay. One last question here uh, about, uh, it looks like saving test results. Is it possible to save test results from each test, protractor test, phantom, karma test, etc., cetera, uh, into individual reports inside a folder on my server that launched Jenkins? So if there aren't plugins to or some technology to generate the JUnit report, you could handle the JUnit report and move it to wherever you need it to be, uh, the JUnit XML report. So just assemble it uh, as part of your test automation framework and uh, move it or copy it to wherever you need it to be. That's all the questions uh, that have come in so far. Uh, Jack, you want to take it over and go through the last couple of slides and yeah. resources for people? Yeah, thanks so much. Great questions. Um, I just wanted to quickly summarize um, what we talked about today. So as, as we all know, SOS is committed to making automated testing with continuous integration and continuous delivery as painless as possible. That's why we're putting out the tool that we see today in the SOS Labs. Jenkins plugin, we have similar plugins available for other CI systems. Um, using Bamboo, Circle CI, Travis CI, Teamsy, we have integrations that are very similar uh, for all of those platforms as well. Um, the Sauce Labs Jenkins plugin is a great way to leverage the power of Jenkins and Sauce without having to do a lot of configuration. So it makes things a lot um, more simple for you to get started. And, and the update Jenkins plugin finds some new functionality around platform configuration reporting. So those of you that are familiar with the old Jenkins plugin, you'll notice that it's, it's much easier to see what browsers you've selected and to select multiple browsers and platform combinations for parallel testing. Um, and finally, speaking of parallel testing, this is kind of the best practice that we can't emphasize enough here at Sauce Labs. Highly recommend um, using the Jenkins plugin to help you run your tests in parallel, which is going to speed up your build. It's going to make people more confident in your build and, and make CEI, CD a reality at your company. So use this plugin to run tests in parallel. It's a great best practice and a great way for you to make everyone a lot happier by speeding up the build. If you'd like more information, um, here's a few resources that you can get hold of. So feel free to download the new Jenkins plugin uh, from the Jenkins CI website. There are notations for this Jenkins plugin that covers everything Neil talked about and more. Um, that's available at docs.saucelabs.com. And then, of course, you can always sign up for a free trial of Sauce at saucelabs.com. Sign up trial. Thank you.